Hello and welcome to Chris's Retro Corner. I'm Chris, this is my Retro Corner, and this is my Sinclair ZX Spectrum. This Spectrum was kindly donated to the Retro Corner by my good friend Darren, and I thank him just one more time for giving me this smashing example of what really is a fantastic 8-bit micro. I mean, who hasn't either used, seen, or heard stories about one of these iconic home micros? This is how this specky came to me. So let's have a very quick look around the box and then we'll dig in. So you'll note there that it says free software, um, six pack with this Spectrum. The six pack seem to come in two different varieties and this is the one that Darren got with his. So you've got the Maker Chip, um, Science Horizon Survival, Computer Scrabble, Chess, Checkered Flag, and quite importantly, horoscope skiing. And we'll come back to that in just a, just a little while. Pop up over to the side. So without further ado, let's dig in and unbox this specky. I quite imagine that Darren was uh, pretty excited to get this um, when he was 13 for, for his... Uh, for his Christmas present. So there we go. Beautiful. There's the spectrum in all its glory. And it really is a lovely looking device. Designed by Rick Dickinson. Uh, he won an award for this and of course the ZX81 before it. Um, yeah, and he's done a, a smashing job. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Let's dig a little deeper into the box. So we've got some squeaky, we've got some manuals here. Uh, so we've got an introduction to the ZX Spectrum. Very, very short, I think, how to, to load and save things, how to set it up, that was about it. Uh, we've got the basic programming manual, which is awesome. Back in the day when you bought a computer, they were all just a little different. There was none of this standardization. Um, and so you basically got a manual on actually how to use it and how to program it. Um, because like I say, they're all a little different. So uh, it's, it's absolutely great to have that. Um, and with a little bit of luck, I'll get to have some fun going through that at some point in the future. Um, we've also got a software uh, catalog. Let's have a quick look. January 1984. So there we go. That was that was that was Christmas '83. Um, so uh, that Darren got that. So uh, absolutely fantastic. So it's a lovely little piece of memorabilia to have there as well just sort of get a flavour for, oh, there's the maker chip look, um, just get a flavour for, uh, for for what uh, for what software was like back in the day. Lovely, very colourful, let's, let's flick that again, very colourful. Spectrum, there we go, <laughs> excellent. So as you can see we've got some leads there as well, let's take those out. As we, as we know, unfortunately, the tests of time, uh, these polystyrene boxes don't uh, seem to stand up to them so well. But let's be quick, like a, like a bandage. Quick, take it off. So that's one, and you can, you can see that, yeah, was it? Oh, that's actually came out really cleanly. I thought it had, oh, it's on there, that's, that's why. Um, but you can see that the uh, the polystyrene reacts with the uh, with the coating on the lead. It does some some nasty things. Worse luck. Um, so these are the leads you got with it. You've got the RF cable. You've got the power lead there as well. Um, and of course, the all important uh, link it up to your existing. You didn't get it in the kit. You had to have one already, and most people did have a, a tape deck um, that would take a, a headphone and a microphone. Um, sort of inputs and outputs between the uh, the deck and the specky. So. Let's pop that all away for a second and pop just a few bits back for a moment. And there we go. Pride of place on the top there. So what can I say about the humble specky that's not already been said? Well, in all honesty, not a lot. But what, by way of a brief overview, um, just in case anyone's brand new to these, um, the Sinclair ZX Spectrum was released on the 23rd of April 1982 and it was initially manufactured in Dundee, Scotland by Sinclair Research Limited and then later through some very savvy licensing and business deals across many countries including Portugal 
where this one's from. Hey. <laughs> the Spectrum, or Specky as it was affectionately known by its users, was available on release via mail order to start with and then quickly thereafter from numerous high street outlets up and down the country and later beyond its native shores. The Spectrum boasted colour, hence the name, sound and a proper keyboard, although even now that last one is still up for debate. All these are features that its predecessor, the Sinclair ZX81, didn't have and it marked a huge step up in Sinclair's home micro game. The Speccy initially came in two flavours. In its basic form, the entry level model had 16 kilobytes or K of random access memory or RAM, originally retailing at £125, or its big brother, packing a pretty impressive for the time and more importantly for the money, 48K of RAM. The 48K model weighed in at a mere £50 more at £175, and that quickly became the one to own. 16K owners could send their micros away to be factory upgraded or even purchase DIY kits and upgrade their own machines at home to the more desirable 48K. Software houses responded to the marketplace and geared up their top end games to make good use of the 48K available on the higher spec model. By way of comparison, both the BBC Micro with its 32K of RAM and the Commodore 64 with its 64K both retailed initially for £399. To put these figures into perspective, in September 2020 pounds sterling, that's about £445 um, and £620 respectively for the two spectrums. £445, just saying, um, would get you an upcoming disc version of a PS5. And by way of comparison, the rather huge leap up to £1,420 in today's money for the BBC or 64 would fetch you an equivalent 2020 spec 13 inch 2.3 gig i5 MacBook Pro. So you can see that the ZX Spectrum was priced extremely competitively and the buying public was quick to forgive several of this basic micro's shortcomings and it sold like hotcakes. By the end of its 10 year production run final sales figures are estimated at around about 5 million units and that's a lot of speckies. In fact, so influential was this humble 8-bit, numerous Spectrum clones sprung up, being manufactured in many crony trees across the world. There's currently a Facebook group dedicated to this attack of the clones. If you'd like to know a little bit more about the ZX Spectrum and its history, check out the description where I've put a few links to some things um, for your perusal. My own history with the Spectrum is a little too short and a little too brief. Um, so I'm really looking forward to expanding my knowledge and getting a bit more familiar with this rubber keyed wonder. Um, but over the summer break of my first year of high school, I made several trips um, over to go and see a high school friend, Kevin, and we spent hours playing Kickstart, uh, Daily Thompson's Decathlon, Manic Miner, Jetpack, um, Joust, I mean, uh, amongst others. And in between uh, loading these games, or at least attempting to load, I didn't always load, um, we'd arm wrestle, fun war, uh, deliver each other dead arms and legs, uh, give each other Chinese burns, um, kick each other with ever increasing ferocity, finding more and more inventive ways of inflicting pain on each other, and thus proving, of course, um, who was the toughest with these feats of endurance. Um, so yeah, good times. So, I'm keen to know a little bit more about this Spectrum, what issue number um, sort of revision the board is, uh, and what condition it's like inside. So, let's pop that over there for a second. Close those up and get them out of the way. And let's turn our attentions to this. Definitely want to check it over before, uh, before switching it on. It's always nice to have a snoop around as well. Oh, before I start using the wrong size bit.
that's better. Before I start, let's have a, let's have a quick look at these screws. So I, I did notice this. There doesn't, doesn't seem to be any marks on those screws at all. So literally, you and I, right now, we're the first people inside this. Since it was put together in Portugal, um, in, in, let's call it 1983. Okay, here we go. so far okay to take it off carefully I'm going to need to remove the, uh, the keyboard membrane tails let's just do that super carefully these keyboard tails were stuck they've got a bit of a reputation for um, for aging cracking but they don't look too bad. It's a, it's a quick zoom. A quick zoom. So yeah, that actually looks very promising. Yeah, my Spectrum Plus um, did not have uh, membrane tails in uh, quite as good nick. But yeah, lovely. Now that looks remarkably similar um, to my plus, the board layout and the uh, regulator heatsink. <gasps> Would you believe? There we go. It's exactly the same revision number. There we go. So 1983, revision 4A. So quite remarkably, and, and sheer fluke, Two of the same revision board. That's going to make that's going to make buying a cap kit very easy. Lovely. Okay. So uh, see if we can lift. And there we go. It's remarkably, it's remarkably clean in here. I I, I was never this clean as a youth. There, there would have been there would have been crumbs or something in there but that's that's really quite clean Darren's kept, kept that in really good nick so yeah there we go quick look around that board like I say 1983 revision 4a so quite fortunately I'm already uh, I'm already a little bit familiar with that board was half expecting uh, an issue three it seems that issue three boards are, are by far the, uh, the the most mass produced let's have a quick look at the ULA chip there don't know if you can see that in this light it's not the best light but yeah that's a fronty chip and it's a C what's that 6C double zero one E dash seven So I'm going to have a, a quick look around the board and just check how these uh, electrolytic capacitors look. They, they look absolutely fine. There's no evidence of leakage or bulging. Oh, it looks remarkably clean and tidy. So there's no there's no evidence of a of sort of factory fitted um, bodge wires or or anything like that. It's remarkably clean. Let's have a quick look underneath as well. I'm guessing Darren may have used this with a. If we have a, a quick look at the fingers there, if it'll focus. A little bit of scuffing on those. Um, so I'm assuming you had a, a joystick adapter at some point. Yeah, all looks remarkably clean. So I'm literally going to put that back straight back in the box and uh, and see if we can fire it up.
So there we go, it's back in its box. So for anyone who hasn't seen one of these before, um, you've got the, uh, the TV RF out there. Um, you've got an uh, ear or headphone socket, so you link that to headphone socket, and that will go to the microphone socket on your on your tape deck. Um, so the uh, so the spectrum can can hear the tape deck, and it can also speak out to it as well, of course, as you try and save something. Um, nine volt DC in there. Um, most importantly, um, the the center pin is negative, and that's that's uh, pretty much the other way round to most of the rest of the world for some reason um, and unfortunately a lot of these have died because they've had replacement power supplies popped in there and then it's, it's taken something out internally so hopefully that's not the case all looks good looking forward to experiencing this uh, this keyboard again um, and a little bit more for myself you know with my friend Kevin I'd, I'd have I'd have one side of the keyboard over here if I think you got a Kempston interface or Kempston compatible in interface um, for a keyboard, so I'd 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 be relegated to the keys, uh, and he'd be using the joystick. So, um, oh, I almost forgot. There were there were more a few more software titles. So let's have a, let's have a quick look in the in the box here, and just see if you recognise any more of these software titles. I do need to get myself sorted out with a with a decent reliable tape deck because unfortunately I don't so I'm going to have to resort to using a, a phone um, and play ZX for this one but I will sort out a tape deck soon so I need to give us some some power where's my power supply there it is give it a method to listen to my phone we need to hook it up to and quite importantly tune it into my old telly as well uh, it's not had a composite mod done to it yet um, I might not do it I might I might might keep it absolutely stock um, and 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 use it on the on the old TV it'd be, be quite nice to do that actually so TV on. Pop that in. That in. Oh, there we go. Yes, and then power. This won't be tuned in. So nothing changed. There was never a power light or an LED. Um, on these so you don't know whether it's switched on so I'll have to tune it in bear with me while I do just that there we go that was that was pretty quick dim L Ooh. let's try that again Hey, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Excellent. Right, fantastic. Okay, so what I'm going to try and load um, is, is Horoscope Skiing. I was given him specific instructions by Darren. This was the first game that I needed to play on this. If it were actually, that's the point. I said if it worked, it works, doesn't it? Does it work straight out of the box? It appears to. I'm just going to press every key. You can hear a little click if you listen really carefully every time you press a key. Well, there you go. Who knew? It seems to be absolutely perfectly functional straight out of the box. Amazing. Wow, I was expecting to replace a RAM chip or two actually to be honest. So yeah, the the, the whole tape loading thing was uh, was was <laughs> I wasn't expecting to do it. Fantastic.
Okay, um, so Horace goes skiing. There we go, we're supposed to load skiing um, and it's, it's compatible with the 16K version, the lowest spec RAM version, as well as the 48K. So there we go. I'm going to leave the inlay out to refresh my memory on on how uh, on how one plays this because I can't remember Q Z I and P yeah there we go okay <laughs> fantastic stuff right let's crack on with this and see if we can uh, see if we can get a game loaded in so let's grab a phone navigate into uh, play zx that's downloadable from the uh, google play store pop that in look for horace Ooh, how do i spell horace there you go horace goes skiing sure. give it some uh, give it some beans load symbol shift and the p key to give us our quotes enter and i'm hoping that that is ready to load press play and there we go looks like it's searching So let's let that load and see if we can have a bit of fun with this. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, do get in touch in the comments below if you've got something to say. I do rather like a good chat. You may have picked up on that already. Um, and share your fond memories of the ZX Spectrum. I'd love to hear about them. If you'd like to see more content like this one, wow, that is loud, isn't it? Um, please consider subscribing to my channel. Um, but for now, thank you for watching. And I do look forward to seeing you again in another video soon. Let's uh, let's give Horace go skiing a go. Oh, almost. <laughs> nope. Can't even get across the road.